Kdybych řekl, že dnes bude naším hostem na plenárně Per Gessle, tak by asi většina z vás nevěděla, o koho se jedná. A obávám se, že by nepomohl ani, kdybych řekl, že je to švédský skladatel populární hudby. Ale když řeknu, že je to mužská polovina skupiny Roxet a autor všech jejich slavných písní, tak už byste vědět mohli. A možná, že vůbec nejlepší ze všeho bude, jednu z těch písní si připomenu. Tahle skupina prodala za svou kariéru 75 milionů desek. Samozřejmě, když prodáte 75 milionů desek, tak už nikam nechodíte, protože všichni chodí za vámi. No tak to je i náš případ. Proto dnešní plovárnu točíme v poněkud aseptickém prostředí šatny v O2 aréně. Ale jsme rádi, že zde Pera Gesla můžeme přivítat. Per, does the name Roxette mean something? Oh yes, I mean, Roxette is a song by an English band called Dr. Feelgood. I see. From the 70s, sort of a pub rock thing. Uh, and my first band that I started was a Swedish band called Jelena Tater. And uh, that, that band, Jelena Tater, became very, very big in Scandinavia. So we convinced our record company, EMI, uh -huh. for us to do an English album, yeah. release it in the States. And we did. And uh, we used the name Roxette. Mm -hmm. But the band folded up, and Marie and I got together, and then we kept the, band, the band's name. So Roxette is like yeah. a tradition. Who put you and Marie together? Friends. You know, we shared rehearsal studios in the yeah. 70s, playing in, in different bands. Mm -hmm. So we've known each other since uh, our teens, basically. Did you know from, from the beginning, this will work? This is it? No, you know, I, I was, like I said, I, I, I was in another band and we had great success for four yeah. or five years. Marie was struggling as a solo artist. She eventually met the guy who produced my band, and I they see. became a couple, and they wrote I the first see. two soul albums for Marie in, uh -huh. the, in the mid '80s. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we've been we've been friends. We've almost been like a sister brother thing. You know, we never had a, any romance or anything. Yeah. But we always been. Uh, I was really, you know, so impressed by her voice and her personality. Oh, yeah. So I always carry that secret dream to, you know, write songs for Marie. And mm -hmm. so that was the whole essence of Roxette: is my songs, Marie's voice. Yeah. You know. But you're a great singer as well. You have your own your solo soul career. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but that's right. It works and you, you are standing always a little bit as a step beside her. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, sure. But that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, Marie yeah. is the front person of Roxette. And uh, I was really, really surprised then that our breakthrough song was sung by me. You know, the look is sung yeah. by me. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't our intention at all. <laughs> it screwed up my mind for uh, six months. <laughs> There are many bands who are successful in Europe, but they never make it in the States. How did you do it? Uh, 
we, we were very lucky, you know, there was a, ra a radio station in Minneapolis who, who played, uh, you know, people could you know, bring their favorite records and, and play it on the air. Yeah. And a guy that, that was in Sweden, an American guy, he gave them the, a Roxette record. And uh, they didn't play it, but he wanted it back. So when they, when they got it back, uh, bef uh, the program director happened to see it. So, and, he, and he loved the sleeve because it was the Look Sharp album and it had a yeah, newspaper yeah. thing. So the program director listened to the first song before he gave it back, and the first song was The Look. And so I put it on the air, and you know, the phone started to ring, and we want to hear this song again, blah, blah, blah. You know? So it sort of snowballed uh, all over America, out of Minneapolis. And at the same time, there was a DJ in Los Angeles, who for some reason, also with a Swedish connection, who also started playing it in LA. So uh, I remember sitting in Stockholm, hearing that we're getting airplay in the States, and I didn't you know, I didn't even know which song it was, and we didn't believe it. We thought it was maybe Listen to Your Heart or... What a surprise. Oh yeah, Jesus. That was the, the, that's quite incredible. Have you met the, the, the guy, the, the, the student? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. many times. Yeah. yeah. There was a big media thing in the States when this happened. So I we, think we, so. Yeah, he was with us, and then EMI, you know, took care of everything. What does he do nowadays? Is he a producer or something? Uh, <laughs> he should be. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I think, I think he leads a uh, sort of low lifestyle in, in Minneapolis yeah. with his family yeah. and kids. Yeah. There was a documentary made about him, about really? this, this, this event, about yeah. the look, uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, he looked to be in a good shape. Yeah. You topped uh, the charts in Europe and in the States as well. Is it a big difference if you compare European charts? and uh, American charts, I mean, in the taste. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's really hard for me to say. Today, the music industry has changed so much. I mean, I, I can't really follow the charts anymore because I don't really know how they yeah. work. Yeah. Uh, but in the old days, you know, it's a, there was a certain American style which worked very well in the States, which didn't work in, in, in Europe. Uh, and it was also always very hard for European bands to get across because we didn't really know how to create that sound. And I think the reason we had so many hits in the States, it was that we didn't even try. We just, we tried to, we, we did it out of the Swedish way. We stayed away from American producers, we stayed away from American yeah. record companies and executives and managers and, you know, we just did it out of Stockholm. Yeah. And I think in the end of the day, that created the whole Roxette sound. There were so many uh, ideas from the EMI in, in the States and all those record companies to, to, for us to move to LA, move to New York, you know, work out of New York or, Chicago, or whatever, but uh, we didn't want to do it. Well, it's a kind of chemistry, even with a hit single. If I would be a composer and I would like my song to be played on the radio, mm -hmm. what should I avoid? What you should avoid? Instrumentals. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, if you have a today, I think you can actually do anything. I mean, if, if you have a great instrumental and you have a Tarantino film, you yeah. know, playing it, yeah. you know, th there's a way. Can make it. Sneak it in somewhere. Yeah. You feel it in your stomach if you have a gut feeling, you know, yeah. if, if it's going to work or not, you know. Or at least you feel that this is, this is really good for me. I always, always felt like uh, all, all the songs are my kids. Yeah. I love them all. If I didn't like them, I would never have released them. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I talked to Benny Anderson from ABBA once and he yeah. said, uh, He's the biggest ABBA fan in the world because he loves, <laughs> he wrote everything, he loved, really yeah, loves he, it. Yeah. And I think that's a great thing when you, when you think about it, it's yeah. just amazing because uh, my generation, we, we come from, you know, writing and, you know, preparing everything. We're not, we're not today everyone is, yeah. one guy is doing a loop, next that guy is doing the bass. Yeah. And they uh, even don't meet. They no, they don't even meet. Yeah, email yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's it's, it's pretty crazy. It's I don't understand it. But yeah. I'm getting old. Yeah. Like, I'm sounding like my parents. <laughs> How do you keep the songs fresh when you play it for so many years? Is there a system? Do you arrange it sometimes or...? There's, there are many ways. I mean, you, first of all, you have to collect, collect a bunch of people that you really, really love to play yeah. with. And uh, it's a big difference between this rock set and the previous rock set mm -hmm. versions because this time it's everything, is, you know, we, we don't try to, re, re, uh, to duplicate the production from the record. We try to make it 100% live unique every night. And sometimes we don't use click tracks or anything, so sometimes the songs go a little too fast, a little too slow, or become a little too long because the guitar player wants to play a long solo or whatever, which is just the way we want it to be. Yeah. In the old days, you had click tracks because you had l the lights programmed through the click tracks. Okay. So, I mean, it, it, every, if a song was 358, it was 358. Okay. 
<laughs> so I mean, but we got tired of that. This that's is like a prison cell. It's, it is, it's, yeah, yeah, in a way it is, you know, but that's the way most, most bands work today, you know, yeah. you, have, you have a lot of, especially really young bands, I mean, you have all these uh, extra music on tape, on computers, running along with a song or backing vocals and stuff, yeah. we don't have that at all. But it's, it's also a matter of taste, and we just want it to be very classic. Yeah. And that Marie, and both Marie and I, we, we come from that sort of thing, you know, we, we, we love this, to play together, and I think you know, if, you have, if you have a great band, uh, and you love playing together and it sounds great, you, it's just fantastic to have this catalogue of songs that we have. I because, so. I mean, everyone, the, yeah. the, the crowds are just going crazy. I mean, it, of course, rehearsing Listen to Your Heart or rehearsing The Must Have My Love is not the most <laughs> <laughs> uplifting thing in the world. But as soon as you have you know, a couple yeah. of thousand people in front of you and you know that it means so yeah. much, you can see that in their eyes, yeah. you know, and people are crying yeah. and everything, it's just amazing. I guess it must have been love uh, has been played for more than four million times in the U.S. radio. Both that one and Listen to Heart. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, could you imagine a song that you could listen to for four million times? Uh, no, I do, I'm, let's say four thousand times without getting bored. No. Is, is is there a song you you would say I could listen to this piece uh, forever? Yeah, there are. Yeah. There are many songs that I. I yeah, I always go back to uh, Dear Prudence, oh, yeah. uh, The Only That's Living classic. Boy in New York, mm. Simon and Garfunkel, mm. um, Lady Grinning Soul, David Bowie, fantastic yeah. music. There's lots of Burt Bacharach tracks that I think are work of genius. It's just fantastic writing, yeah. fantastic songwriting. Um, but that's the old school. Yeah. Am I right if I say 35 years in showbiz? Yeah, I, start, is it I, more? St I started in 1978, so it's yeah, 34. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, I'm old. Yeah. So, but you're experienced. You learned a lot, of, a lot of things. Does it make writing uh, easier? No, it doesn't make it easier. I mean, you become more and more fussy because you've done so many things. Yeah. On the other hand, um, I'm a much more relaxed writer and artist today than I was 15 years ago. I was much more career. In, interested in the career moves and, and you know being part of this whole music industry yeah. thing. Today I don't. It, maybe it has a lot to do with Marie's illness and everything. You know, I, I, you had to sort of sit down and rethink everything. And you know, why are you doing this? What do you want to do with your life? You know, and, and don't take everything for granted. So I, I think it's just. Um, um, I try. To, I try to just um, take it very easy with my with my writing these days. You start with the lyrics or with with uh, you know if 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 melody everything is right I try to do everything at the same time you know to to sort of get the same temperature in the lyric yeah. as I do in the music, um, but on the other hand I collect ideas for lyrics titles yeah. uh, stuff I, I write down in or iPad just collections of stuff that I if I'm into writing I'm checking up with whatever I have. It could be a conversation with a taxi driver, it could be yeah. something you pick up from a movie or something. Those are the best ones, yeah. Yeah. which comes from life. Yeah. 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 Joyride is, Joyride, the hello you fool, I love you, it's, yeah. it's a note my oh. wife left me on the piano in Swedish. <laughs> which is hello you fool, I love you, and I said, great line for a song. <laughs> <laughs> so you just That's used stealing from life. Yeah. You have to be very careful if you are married to a musician, True. because he steals everything. You know, I think that's, that's also an interesting point that someone told me that if like an, like an American or an English guy would never, could never have written a lyric like The Look, because The Look is like a, it's a puzzle of, of phrases put together. Guide phrases, actually, the first verse was just a guide phrases to rem for me to remember the, the rhythm of the song. Um, you know, sometimes when you write in English and you're not English yourself, you use the English language in a different manner. Yeah. And I think that's uh, really interesting because I, I tend to listen to words and phrases in a different way than an Englishman does, yeah. uh, which, which is good. Do you just for fun play clubs sometimes, uh, or just the big halls? Well, with, with Roxette on this tour, it, it had just grown, you know, okay, so we yeah. suddenly it just, sure. we're just touring the world yeah. <laughs> again. Uh, in 2009, I, I did a tour on my own uh, with my Party Crash album, which yeah. I, and I played the clubs, including mm. Prague. Is it the same energy you have to, to show if you are in a club or, or in such a huge place? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, same. Yeah. And it's, if, it's just, uh, 
it's just as fun. Some people say it, it's, oh, I don't want to play big, but I love to play big. If, if you have like you know, 20 or 30,000 people uh, and everyone is singing along, you know, it's, 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 it's such a massive thing. You know. It's recharging. It is. I guess. So you haven't been on tour for, uh, I guess, 15 years? Well, no, not really. 2001. Yeah. So it's 10 years. That's quite a long time. And uh, I know that Maria was d diagnosed with a brain tumor. Would you think she could make it back on the stage? It's quite incredible. Uh, no, I, I, no. Seeing her and knowing what she went through all these yeah. years, uh, it was impossible. It, it's, it's, a, it's not a small miracle that she's back, it's a big miracle that she's back. If you asked me four or five years ago, I would have said, no, not a chance, it won't happen. And um, I was, when I was touring in 2009, it's not that far away, uh, spring of 2009, I played Amsterdam. Uh, Marie and her family came and checked out the show and I asked her if she wanted to join me on stage for a couple of Roxette songs. Yeah. It was like maybe 1200 people there in the club. And uh, she did, but she was so nervous, she didn't have any self-confidence and uh, yeah. she was just uh, walking really slowly and she was just uh, you know, really scared. But the reception... Mom must go crazy. The, people were crying. The, the reception she got was just mind-blowing. You know, it was just sensational. And, and you could, you could, I could see standing next to her how, 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 she be, uh, how well she became. She, it, she just like vitamins into her system. And uh, you know, a couple of days after that, she called me up and, and asked me if I wanted to write a new Roxette record. She, was, she felt like she had something she wanted to do. Yeah. So that was the beginning of everything. Yeah, that, it's, it's uh, incredible what, what a power the music has. And she's a survivor for sure. You know, she only had 5% chance of, of surviving. 5% chance. One out of 20 survives. And she's one of those, uh, so it's amazing. When you think about that, it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing. She's gonna be and it's, it's a hope for all the others, you know? Mm, oh yeah. Because in, in s such a kind of profession, mm. where you really have to be fit yeah. to enter yeah. su such an audience. Mm. So it's a hope for, for everyone who's, who's uh, in, in the same situation. She's a role model, sure. Yeah. Mm. Is she having fun on stage? She wants to play all the time, <laughs> every day. It's the same when we recorded the uh, Charm School album. She was, in the old days, you know, she was like three hours late for a session or whatever. Today, and only this time, she was uh, like uh, the first to hit in the studio. <laughs> every time I went to the studio, she was sitting there waiting. Yeah. Yeah, she's so enthusiastic and... Uh, Did you have some argues uh, about the songs? On the, on the new one? Uh, well, I mean, during your career. If you brought oh, something yeah. and she, she said, I don't, don't like the, this line or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time. All yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But it has to be like that in the group, you know, otherwise... It, it, the problem... And also, the, 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 uh, one of the things that is so important is that if, if you're going to work together, you have to work together. And yeah. that doesn't mean that you have to like everything you, you, Definitely, yeah, uh, sure. you do. So, I mean, you have to have these argue, some arguments all the time. You have arguments about you know, the, the set design on stage, or, or the albums leave, or who's going to be the stylist for the clothes, or blah, blah, blah. I thought if you would think about a, a particular line in, a, in a, a text, in the lyrics, what she didn't like and you had to, uh, to change. Um, no, I, th I, don't, I can't really think of it any specific sentence, but I know that there, there were some songs that she didn't really feel comfortable singing, so I sang it. You know, the, the look was actually called He's Got the Look because it was supposed She's to be sung by Marie. Yeah. But she couldn't sing it. it. It sounded crazy because she, it's a melody that goes da 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 She wants big melodies. Da 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 you know, Queen of Rain or whatever. Perfect day. But it's a great song. Yeah, but it's look is a great song. It fitted my little voice instead, so. Yeah. You never Well, it's great to get to the top, but it must be difficult to stay there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about what we're going through now, this is just mind-blowing as well, you know, what what has happened to us. We didn't expect anything. We didn't expect, uh, I mean, we, we, we started off, you know, we told uh, our, our agent in Stockholm that we, we were ready to do some shows and, you know, we did St. Petersburg, Moscow, we did uh, some things in Scandinavia. And then suddenly you get offers to do South America and, and as soon as you start playing and people go to the shows and we're getting fantastic reviews and people love it and it, it just explodes over the internet. 
So suddenly we have, um, I think, 132 shows booked. And we, this is number 34. Yeah. Oh my God. That's <laughs> it's like in the old days. We did like 130 shows for Joyride. Or so how many days do you have off during this tour? Uh, well, we work really tight. At least tight. 14 days, yeah. <laughs> some kind of holiday? Or, or August, September is basically off. Yeah. Uh, and the Christmas period, and then we go back on the road again in February next year. So that's that's really tough. No, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I guess so. Yeah. Well, uh, it was great to have you here. Oh, uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much to talk to us, and uh, uh, good luck tonight, Thank and you. good luck through uh, uh, the whole tour. Thank Thanks you very, very much. much. Pleasure. Thanks. Es bin aschimostem, bergesle.